Hey folks, uh, it is the Tuesday after WrestleMania as of me recording this, and today that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Mania, we're going to talk about how it went, uh, and then I'm grading the show. Uh, so to start us, uh, Triple H doing the new Then Now for Everything is awesome. I think that's dope. I like the graphic for it. I think Paul doing the vocals for it is great and then him coming out and talking about the new era of the WWE and whatnot. Very nice. And then the first match being Rhea Ripley and Becky is dope. And I also think it's very poetic that Triple H comes out and he's like this is the first mania that is completely mine. And directly after saying that two women that he has made like his poster children uh starting the show, which was great. Uh, Becky, her entrance was basically an advertisement for her book, which is fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, she deserves it. Uh, she also deserved this banger of a match. Uh, next entrance, Rhea comes out to, uh, her song being played live, and I thought it was a very nice moment. A, because they just... It's a crowd that looks like they belong together. Um, also, the lead singer just looks like Rhea, which is wild. Uh, and then Rhea being a fan of Motionless and White. Is that the... I think that's the right band. I hope I'm not getting that wrong. She went from being a fan of them. She had her song made by them. And then they performed it live for her. Great. Uh, she gets down to the ring and the match starts. Banger. A lot of high spots. A lot of slow spots made me feel nice. Spots that I'll point out and be like, these were dope. Were um, There's a point where Rhea has Becky in like a... God. Of course, I thought about it. Now I'm, now I'm forgetting what things are called. Ugh. So she gets her up in like an electric chair position. And then they're like backing to the ropes and they fall out of the ring and Rhea lands standing with Becky still up there and then takes the flat back to the to the mat on the ground. Awesome spot. Uh, and then the ending spot was fucking sick. Uh, number one, both, both women kicked out of each other's finish. Cool. But then they're close to the end. Uh, Becky's about to hit an avalanche manhandle slam. She gets clobbed just across the face and takes a riptide on the turnbuckle, dope, and then later, like, immediately gets yanked into another one to take the take the three count. Awesome match. Uh, was it as good as Charlotte and Rhea? No. But it didn't have to be. Uh, I think it stands as its own, like, good match. Like, very good. Um, right after that, the, the next match was the tag match, which was fucking sick. A uh, lot of high spots. Uh, I'll point out just a couple. Uh, the double moonsault spot was fucking sick. Uh, ladders up on the outside. Pete Dunne's on one end. Tyler Bates on the other. And they just both did moonsaults into the crowds. Fucking sick. Uh, R-Truth hitting the John Cena comeback shit on... Well, he did it to multiple people, but the main person he was attacking was Finn Balor. That was dope. Uh, and that was... <laughs> him begging to get tagged in in a ladder match is awesome. He also pinned uh, members of the Judgment Day. I think he pins... I think he pinned Finn. I could be wrong. But uh, he pins him one, two, three... And then Miz is like, truth, that's not how you fight. It's not how this works. Um, so that was sick. Uh, your winners are A-Town Down, Down Under, uh, Theory, and uh, Waller. And then your other winners of the Raw Tag Team Championships uh, is uh, Awesome Truth, which is cool. Um, my original prediction was Awesome Truth and DIY. Uh, but I'm not mad. It's Waller's first... Gratian Waller. It's his first championship on the main roster. I think those two, as much as like crowds boo them, they're definitely over. People understand that they can wrestle and stuff. So I don't have anything against them winning. 
uh, plus because they're always with Logan Paul. Uh, those three being a little gimmick, me like we have all the belts. It's going to be a thing to watch them get their asses kicked. So that's fun. And then Awesome Truth. Our Truth deserves it. Miz deserves it. It's our truth. Our Truth is 52. His first sh- like showing in the WWE was 1999. It is 2024. 25 years later, he finally wins at Mania. Fucking crazy. Uh, but that was cool. Ooh. Um, Shiza. After that match, uh, they kind of like showed the Hall of Fame folks, and that was nice. And then due to Barry Windham and Mike Rotunda being there, uh, the crowd paid a nice little moment to the late, great Bray Wyatt, which was very sweet and very nice and definitely didn't make me tear up, I promise. Uh, But that was really enjoyable. Uh, And then when we came back, it was time for another tag match. There was quite a few tag matches on night one, uh, which is cool. You're putting more people on TV, so fun with me. Well, on pay-per-view. It was Ray and Andrade, which is awesome, versus uh, Santos and Dominic. Very fun match. Uh, Was it match of the night? No, but it was enjoyable. Uh, My favorite spot of the match was... Shit, that's two spots I've brought up that are just electric chairs. Uh, Andrade is on the top rope with Ray in an electric chair position, and just they like dove and like did a double crossbody, which was cool. And then I guess the other big spot was uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix getting launched super fucking far off a sling off like a springboard on like the middle rope to the outside. He, I think, genuinely moved, like, a little under 20 feet, if not 20. Uh, so that was cool. Uh, Ray and Andrade won. Um, which, okay. <laughs> I don't mind. The match kind of didn't have much buildup. Andrade's only been here since January. And he hasn't really done anything with these guys. Dominic and Escobar didn't have anything in common or whatever, other than the fact that they're both... Latinos, I guess, and both have history with Ray, but, like, they don't, they haven't, like, gone back and forth or conversated, and then, like, the two groups haven't talked or anything. It's weird. But the match was fine. Uh, I think Dominic needs to be treated like a bigger deal. I think Dominic Mysterio deserves to be treated like a bigger deal. He's there every week, sometimes multiple times a week. He works every house show, and they treat him like a joke. Which I get it, he's a chicken shit heel. But like, he was your North American champion for a while. He is carrying Monday Night Raws. Like, on a Monday Night Raw, where there were like, no champions were there. Because it was only Roman. Dominic Mysterio carried that shit and got more views than anybody else on YouTube stuff. The ratings and stuff were higher when he did shit. That dude deserves to be treated like he fucking matters. Because he does. He's the future of this company, the future of this business, and that man deserves his fucking respect. Uh, after that match was... Uh, Lil Wayne came out and introduced Jay, and I love Lil Wayne. He's like... He's up there. He's cool. Like I was saying, I like Lil Wayne. He's great. But he just kind of felt like he didn't know what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, he would just... He came out, and he, like, didn't rap. He just kind of, like, sort of ad-libbed. And then when Jay came out, he, like... At one point, he goes to dap him up, and it's, like, obvious that they don't get it. Uh, They just seemed like they didn't know what they were doing. Uh, Which kind of set up the whole match. I think... The only bad part of this the only part of this Wrestlemania I didn't enjoy was Jay versus Jimmy the Uso versus Uso match was okay like there's been a lot worse there's been a lot worse matches at Mania but god it just so much build up the the hype package the video package right before it was so hype and then it was just there 
uh, which wasn't very good. Uh, Jay and Jimmy was pretty much just... If you were around in wrestling in, like, the 2000s, you would have heard the Young Bucks just being made fun of for only throwing super kicks and doing nothing else. That was this match. This match was just super kick, super kick, super kick, super kick, super kick. And that's cool for a spot, but a whole match. Uh, J1, which I think was good, but the match was mid. We didn't even get to, like, have Rikishi, like, exist. Like, I didn't want him to come special guest referee or anything, but being there, you know, could have been cool. But... Uh, the next match was six woman tag, Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and Naomi versus Damage Control, uh, specifically Asuka, uh, Kyrie, and Dakota. Uh, match was good. It was as good as it could be, I think. I think Jade and Bianca are both built to be watched, I guess. Like, the way that they wrestle is very much, like, intimate. Like, the camera needs to be watching them wrestle. So I think in tag stuff, they look weird. Not because they can't do tag matches, but because the way they... the way they act and the way they exude their confidence is very much, look at me, I'm the best. Uh, similar to the reason I don't like John Cena in tag matches, or the reason I don't like um, Stone Cold in tag matches. The way they exude themselves. It's just, like, camera should be on them the whole time. Uh, the match was good. Uh, I'd say... Of the stuff that included women, it was probably my least favorite. But that's because the other women's matches were so fucking good. Um, it's a good match. Uh, I can't think in my head just immediately of crazy spots. Because I don't think it had any, like, oh my god, or extreme stuff. Uh, it was just a really solid wrestling match. Uh, Jade stayed out of it until the very end. And the moment she got in there, she just hit all her big spots. Ended it with Jaded. And then uh, pinned one, two, three. Afterwards, Bianca and Jade look like they're going to hit each other. And instead, they, like, hype each other up a shit. Cool. Uh, that's being built for later, and that match is gonna slam, dude. That match is gonna fucking bang. When when Jade kicks out of the KOD at some point in the future, that shit's gonna hit. Uh, after that was my match of Mania. It it wasn't my match of the night. It was match of Mania, maybe the year. So fucking good. Uh, it's the WWE Intercontinental Championship match, Gunther. The Ring General versus Sami Zayn. This match was everything I love about wrestling. It was Gunther playing his big, exuberant, heel, final boss of the video game character. He just out the gate, just. He just killed Sami. It's like 18 minutes, I think. Of just Sammy dying. Like he's being technical with Guther. And then Guther just. Just slaps him. Uh, Sammy kicks out of everything. He takes a power bomb. He takes a clothesline. He takes a flosion. He takes a power bomb. He takes a splash. He gets put into the rear naked. He, he takes every fucking thing Guther has. And just keeps barely getting out of it. Uh. And then there's a point where it's, you feel like it's over. Because Gunther nails him with the Huluva kick. And down he goes. One, two. Gunther gets up. Not even like a, a 2.9. Like a 2. And you're like, okay, he loses. And then uh, they have a couple spots. And Gunther's always been this way where he is very focused on the match. He doesn't entertain. He's a professional wrestler. He doesn't pay attention to the crowd. He doesn't pay attention to who his opponent is. He only cares about being the best wrestler and winning. And in this match, he views Sammy as beneath him. And due to that, taunts him. Berates him. Talks shit to him, his family, his wife. Uh, and at a point, he goes to the top. And he nails a splash. 
He could pin Sammy. He doesn't. He goes back up. Nails a second one. Goes back up for the third. And due to him being so egotistic and overly confident, he goes up for the third one and he takes a haluva kick while he's climbing. He falls a little bit, takes the top rope brain buster, which made the whole fucking crowd pop, bro. Philadelphia popped their ass off for that. Uh, he takes the brain buster and then he takes two more haluva kicks. One, two, three. And the reign of the Ringinalal is over. 666 days. Great match. Great story. Uh, the lead up to the match was great. Sammy uh, talking with Chad Gable. Gable saying he doesn't need him. Then Sammy going forward, finding Kevin Owens. Those two embracing. Awesome shit. Very, very fun match. Very good match. Uh, it was awesome. Great match. Great storyline. I'm excited for Sami Zayn to be treated like a big deal again. Because he hasn't in a while. Uh, and then it, it happened. It was the, the tag match between the, the Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. All four of these entrances were treated like big deals, which is a good thing. It should be. Um, it, it was awesome. Good match. Um, I think Cody being pinned by Rock is what I is kind of what I, like I pointed out and was like that's probably what's gonna happen, and it happened. Um, I think that's perfect because it means that Roman doesn't beat Cody. We got like the the same camera shot of Cody like sat crying in the middle of the ring. That was cool. Uh, I think the right team won because I think. I think Cody Roman 2 was perfect, uh, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, I think the ending of the show was very abrupt, but in like a perfect way. It was abrupt because it felt wrong, because you don't want to see Cody losing and stuff, which is good. You never... You, he's like the... He's the super baby face. You don't want him to. Um, but night one ends on what is probably wrestling's biggest, like, one-night cliffhanger. Because there's been bigger cliffhangers, like, over a long period of time. Like, who blew up Vince's limo and that sort of shit. Or who, who like, ran over Stone Cold. But one-night cliffhangers, I think this was the biggest one. And it led to some great shit. Uh, night two starts with Stephanie McMahon coming out and hyping up her man, coming out and just hyping up Triple H, talking how fucking good he is, and that this is the first WrestleMania in the era of Paul Levesque, which is fucking awesome, and I, I will probably forever say Levesque, even though it is Levesque, I know, it's a problem. Uh, first match of the night is two Triple H guys, well... A Triple H guy and a Vince McMahon guy that became a Triple H guy. Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, amazing storytelling here. People aren't going to point at this as amazing storytelling due to the main event happening later. But it's so damn good. Uh, I'll start with just how the match went. Fucking dope spots. Um, the first move of the match is a Claymore for a 2.9. Uh, which I genuinely thought it was just going to be the shortest Mania match of all time. I thought they were going to break Rock's record. Uh, but they kept going. Had a banger. Uh, Seth kicks out of three Claymores. Drew kicks out of three Curb Stomps. Uh, fucking a lot of just brutal stuff. Seth selling the fuck out of his knee. Like, he every time he hit a stomp, he just, like, immediately, like, fell to grab his knee. Um, there was a very fun spot where Seth, like, curb stomped Drew on, like, the announce table, but the main thing to talk about with this match was, wasn't, uh, wasn't what happened during the match, it was what happened directly after. Drew's been building up this idea that Rollins has been focused on the bloodline, Rollins has been focused on... Cody, Roman Reigns, this, 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 and he hasn't been focused on me, and that's why I'm going to destroy him. 
and Drew did. He wins, and him and Seth had a beautiful moment where Seth, I, if I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Seth, like, says, you fucking deserve it. Like, tears in his eyes, red-faced, genuinely really hurt, uh, trying to step away from the ring. Drew takes his minute, sit with the belt, he takes it to his wife, shows it to his family, and then he goes and shows it to CM Punk. He shows it off to Punk, talks shit to him. He stands up and turns around, facing the ring and the stage, and Punk sweeps his leg and starts kicking the fuck out of him. Uh, and then out came the part that's perfect storytelling. Drew said that Seth wasn't focused on Drew, and that's what caused him to lose the belt. And then Drew was focused on CM Punk instead of Seth Rollins. And because of that, he got cashed in on by Damian Priest. Damian Priest, now the second person to cash in during WrestleMania. Damian Priest holds the longest tenure as Mr. Money in the Bank. And now the Judgment Day has both the men's and women's World Heavyweight Championship. A uh, perfect bit of storytelling. McIntyre looked absolutely like, genuinely destroyed. Not, like, physically. Like, genuinely, like, emotionally hurt. Very fucking cool. Uh, great match. Great spots. I love... There's a moment. They're zoomed in on CM Punk whenever uh, the music hits for Judgment Day. And you see him go from, like, what the fuck? Who's... He, like, has this, like, weird moment where he has this, like sort of brood edge-esque smile and then it happens uh which is awesome drew now has like the fifth shortest championship reign in wwe history at like five minutes and 40 something seconds next uh next thing that happened uh was the pride of bobby lashley and angelo dawkins and montez ford versus the final testament Karrion Cross, Aikman Razor, a six-man Philadelphia street fight. Uh, it was cool. Bubba Ray Dudley was... <laughs> Bubba Ray Dudley shows up. That's pretty much all I have to say. <laughs> you, you get it. There's a spot where he puts on glasses and the crowd goes crazy because ECW, 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 Philadelphia was going fucking crazy. Um, the match was okay. It was really good. It was just stuck between a bunch of good shit. The match itself was probably like a three and a half star match. I think it was really good. Uh, it was a six man tag that wasn't shit. Um, seeing Paul, seeing seeing Paul just on the outside being an ass is fucking fun. Um, the points, the parts where I go, this stuff was sick. Uh, Bobby takes a nasty DDT into a chair. Kind of like the the Raven spot, if you know what I'm talking Like the drop toe hold thing. He takes like that bump, uh, which is sick. Uh, Montez and Angelo get like the double powerbomb joint done to them. Like, th I think three different times. Uh, and then the ending of the match was... Uh, everybody said, Three, two, one, get the tables! I'm not going to yell. There's someone asleep over there. Um, but they did a get the table spot. There was a big pop. Philadelphia, ECW, you get it. Um, and then Montez and Angelo hit the 3D. Uh, well, the 3D spot happened elsewhere. It didn't go through a table. Uh, Montez hits a nasty frog flash to the table. They, 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 they botched it the first time. They sit, they, they sit carrying cross down on the, on the table and it imploded. But we're not going to worry about that. Uh, Montez nails him. And then Bobby pins him 1-2-3. I think the right team won. I would have... I See, I say I think the right team won, but I don't know. I I think either, either team winning would have been good. Good spot, though. Um, I hope they do more with both stables in the future. I think you should take... Uh, Bobby, and you should push him into the U.S. title picture again, I think. Maybe let him be the one to, to pin Logan. 
Hell, make him tap Logan out. Logan hasn't done that yet. Uh, and then, fuck it, give him the U.S. title, and then throw the tag titles on fucking Montez and Angelo. Fuck yeah, do it. Um, and then Final Testament. Cross is good. I love that fucker. I don't think he needs championships. I think he just needs, like, good storylines. And then, uh, Ikman Rezar, can they just, like, be built like they were in NXT, please? Trip, if anybody can, it's Triple H. Build those fuckers like they're still in NHT. In HT, NXT. Uh, next match was LA Knight and AJ Styles. Good match. Fucking cool. These two have some good chemistry. Uh, in the build, I was saying that it was going to be a great LA Knight match, but only a good AJ Styles match. I was wrong. I was thoroughly impressed. This was a really good match. Uh, since coming to WWE, it's probably my favorite LA Knight match. Is it the best match he's ever had in his career? Probably not. It's probably some random TNA match. But him and AJ had a fucking banger. Um, the main story of the match was LA Knight getting his knee and ankle fucked so that uh, Styles could lock in the calf crutcher. But LA Knight got to the ropes. Uh, the big ending spot was... Styles going up and trying to go for a phenomenal forearm. Instead, he got tripped, hit the ropes, and whenever he rolls under, immediately goes into a BFT. Uh, one, two, three. Great match. Great finish. Right guy won. Uh, really loud crowd reactions. Um, when Samantha went to say, and, and your winner, L.A. Knight, uh, the crowd was louder than her. <laughs> saying his name. So that was... That's neat. Oh, hold. Next match was the triple threat for the United States Championship. Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, and the champion Logan Paul. Uh, it was a very, very fun time. Uh, KO came out uh, to his, like, Trons and stuff being EC dub themed. Uh, which was fucking sick. His gear was ECW themed. Um, and he had some fucking fun out there. Of course he did. And of course if any of the fucking wrestlers on the roster are going to geek out about ECW. It's got to be fucking Kevin Owens. Uh, he was on like a little like a little golf cart thingy. And then Orton came out and he backed that bitch up and picked Orton up. And they got down to the ring together. Uh, before the match. Uh, there was a pretty spot of... Kevin walking down in uh, towards Gorilla, and Sammy being there with the title, and he said, it's your turn, and then they had the same moment they had the night before. Kevin goes out, and at that moment, I genuinely thought, nobody else got this much build-up to their entrance. I feel like he's going to win. Uh, the match was fun. It was dope. Uh, all three guys showed how good they can fucking be whenever they're out there trying. Uh, it was very very fun uh, they did the Orton like backdrop into the table spot they did that like five fucking times uh, Randy and Kevin they did fight but they were still friendly about it both guys are still faces neither of them turned on the other um, they just kept beating the fuck out of, of Logan for a while and then they both went to pin him at the same time awkward then they decided to fight they they kept like their little friendship thing going though. Very nice. Uh, at a certain point, uh, Randy is setting up for a punt kick in the corner, and then the big blue prime bottle yanks Logan out, and Randy's pissed. He goes outside. Fucking mask comes off the fucking prime bottle. It's I show speed, and speed was barking at Randy. And then Randy kicked his ass. Randy physically just booted him. This is Sparta type shit. He went back. He pulled the fucking prime suit off of him and RKO'd him on the table. Uh, and Speed showed... He sold the fuck out of that. He just laid there limp for the rest of the match. Um, Orton kicked out of a fucking brass knuckle punch. Kevin Owens took a brass knuckle punch to the gut and then the head. Uh, then the final spot of the match was sick. Uh, Orton kicks out of a stunner, uh, which then led... To, oh yeah, Kevin... Everybody kicked out of an RKO. 
No. Logan took an RKO, but he didn't kick out of it. KO was in the way. Uh, KO and Orton both kicked out of each other's finishes. Um, Kevin sets up a pop-up powerbomb, pops Orton up. Orton comes down into an RKO. Uh, he then gets uh, thrown out for, by Logan. Logan nails the frog splash for the 1-2-3, beats Kevin. Uh, good fucking match. A lot of fun spots. Uh, speed dying was cool. <laughs> Uh, good, good spots, good match. Uh, next up was one of the one of the really well built matches. Uh, it was Io Sky and Bailey for the WWE Women's Championship. Very fun match. Um, I think my favorite spot was the ending. My reasoning being for a short period during the pandemic. Bailey stopped using the Bailey to Belly as a finish and started using a little like elbow drop. Like, off the top. Uh, and in this match, the ending is her nailing the elbow drop. And then uh, Io, like, slowly trying to get up and then immediately taking a rose plant. I thought that was sick. I enjoyed that. Uh, both of them had sick entrances as well. Uh, Bailey came out in, like, this... I'm trying to describe it. There were guys dressed in an Egyptian, like, like stereotypically Egyptian, like, garb, and that was sick, and they had, a, had her up, like, on their shoulders. She came out, and it was fucking sick. Uh, she had these big-ass wings and shit. It was neat. Uh, she got down to the ring, and then Eo came out, and she had, like, uh, I don't know the right term. I don't want to be rude. Women, like, Japanese women with heavy makeup... And, like, old school fans. Um, which was cool. Very fun. Uh, weirdly, I thought there was going to be shenanigans. And there kind of just wasn't. Bailey didn't have to, like, fight off a group of people. Which I originally thought was like, oh, that's weird that that's not happening. But now I'm like, oh, I'm glad that didn't happen. Because it makes it... It made their match better to not have an interference. Uh, but Bailey won. She's your WWE Women's Championship. That is her first time having... That's her first one-on-one -on -one match at Mania, I think. And it's her first time winning a one-on-one -on -one match. I think she... She's won a tag match, and she won, like, a five-woman match. But then any other, like, one-on-one -on -one sort of thing, she's lost. Uh, very fun. And then the main event... And I, I say this knowing recency bias is a thing, but not thinking that it has anything to do with this at all. Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes for the Undisputed WWE Universal Championship is the single most important wrestling match maybe ever. And I think it is the best WrestleMania main event. The only ones that I can even slightly say are close are Mania 30. I can't think if there's one that's... I, I don't think there is. I think Mania 30 is simply the best... I think it's 30 and 40. I don't think any are, like, close to it. Maybe 19? The only ones close to it are Brian, Orton, Batista, and Stone Cold Rock. Those are the only ones that touch it. So goddamn good. This match, the first 20 whatever minutes, no interferences, no bullshit, no bloodline members, no rock, no Jimmy, no solo. It's just Roman versus Cody. And it's so fucking good. Um, Cody takes a Superman punch he takes. Well, no, actually, he doesn't take a Superman punch because the first Superman punch comes after interference. 
He gets put in a guillotine. He gets put in a cravat. He takes a bunch of bumps to the outside. He takes a suplex. He takes like a the weird Uranagi spot. Uh, Roman takes much offense. And then it's like slow built, but in like a good way. It's slow built. It's built similarly to like a Bret Hart big spot where like there's all these little things that make it really good before the big thing. It's that sort of build. Uh, the first, he, Cody sets Roman up, one crossroads, picks him up, goes for another, and takes a super kick by Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy super kicks him, and then uh, more shit goes on with that. And then out comes Jay. And Roman's like, you you go deal with that. You go deal with that bastard. Uh, Jay gets his mania moment. He spears Jimmy off of, like, the stage into some tables. Uh, they don't show you them going into the tables, but they show you immediately after, and you can tell that they just didn't fucking... There's two tables set up. Like, the spear happened onto the second one. The first one's barely touched. So Jay, like... Jay was, like, this close to hitting, like, the Roman spot where he, like, spears you and immediately fucking gets concussed. Uh, the spot he did to Shane McMahon in that Survivor Series match. That, that fucking tunk. Dead. Uh, but that was a sick spot. And then Cody Roman went at it again. Solo comes out. Uh, Solo. It's the same spot from last year. Crossroads 1. Crossroads 2, lifts up for a third, takes a Samoan spike, and then he took the Samoan spike spear combo, uh, which only one other person, many people have taken it, uh, but only one person's ever kicked out of it, and it was, uh, yeah, it was now. <laughs> so, that's cool. Uh, Cody kicks out of that, because Solo nailed the spike, and they just laid Roman on top. Cody kicked out, and Solo's like, huh? And then the spike spear combo happens. Cody kicks out. Huh? And then out comes uh, John Cena because fuck you, Solo. And I kept going, give him an attitude adjustment from the a avalanche that joint. Just fucking, it's called bump, kid. You're going to learn how to take one. Uh, he comes out. Fuck you. You can't see a wobble doll. Fucking AA. He takes Solo to the outside. AA's him through the announce table. Takes off his hat, and he's, like, moving his hair and stuff. And he's getting into the ring. Well, he's about to. Can you some Here comes Rocky. So then we get Rock and, and Cena staring at each other uh, very intently. And Cena's, like, playing with the crowd, because of course he is. And then he, like, takes his hat off, and he goes to swing, and he gets caught. Rock bottom. Uh... Loved the call. The call. I believe it was Michael Cole. He said, uh, "A demon from his past, or something like that." Uh, about Cena seeing Rock, and I thought that was sick. I think that's perfect because of how much of this was like demons from your past, like all of the people going back and forth and shit, like Jay showing up to fight Jimmy, John showing up to fight Solo. John has history with Solo. But he also has history with Roman and with Rock and with Cody. It's like there's so many little tie-ins. It's very fun. Uh, Rock nails Cena. Cena's like rolling out of the ring. And Rock's just kind of like <laughs> fucking talking shit. He takes his like weight belt and he's about to whip Cody with it. Gong. Crowd explodes as the place goes black. Taker's behind Rock. Rock's like, yeah, bitch, fuck you. This, this, and this, and this. And then he turns, and Taker looks like your dad saw you messing with the thermostat, and he just goozles him, picks him up, choke slam, uh, and immediately I said, yeah, you fucking idiots, you thought Dwayne was taking a pile driver? <laughs> no way, not Mr. Hollywood, uh, but he takes the choke slam, and then when the lights shut off and come back on, instead of Taker just being gone and Rock being there. Rock's gone with him, which I thought was very cool. Uh, and then it was down to just Cody and Roman. Um, and long story short, three more crossroads. And then fair and square, clean in the middle of the squared circle. Roman Reigns 
gets pinned by Cody Rhodes, ending the longest championship reign in the WWE since 1991, I think, at 1,316 days. It's still hitting me how big that is. How, how crazy it is that that reign is over. How crazy it is that it existed. But Cody wins. And Samantha breaks down. Whenever Samantha Ir Irving is saying, Hello, you undisputed Universal WWE Champion of the World. She breaks down, dude. She's crying. Michael Cole's tearing up. And Cody is so fucking happy. So many people are in the ring. Sammy, Kevin, Randy Orton, CM Punk, Triple H, Stephanie McMahon shows up for like a third of a second. She's not in the ring. She's up on the stage. Uh, Bruce Pritchard. Fucking... Who else shows up up there? Cody's mother. Brandy's there. Uh, Cody's like... I would assume they're like his nephews or something. They're there. So many people there. And everybody's hugging him. And then he gets down and he hands the title to his mom. And... Shakes all these people's hands. I didn't even bring up... Seth Rollins comes out. Beautiful storytelling. Part of the main match. The per the ending of the match is perfection. Seth is going to hit Rock with a chair. Takes a spear. Um, and then... The shit happens with a taker. And da 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 da. And... The thing that gets Roman beat. The thing that causes him to lose. Is he picks up the chair... Cody's to his right, Seth is to his left, and instead of attacking the man he's in a match with, he gets revenge on Seth by hitting him with the, in the same spot and the same gear that Seth hit him with 12 years ago. No, 10. 12 years ago would be their debut. Yeah, 10 years ago. Bang, he throws the chair down, and then he takes the three crossroads. Beautiful. Seth, as a part of the shield, went out on his shield, which is fucking great storytelling. All these people are there, and Cody's talking to him, and he's apologizing, like, thank you this, thank you that, and they just keep going. And the part of it that really made me feel is he, he like, does all the people in the ring, and then he singles out Michael Cole. He comes down. And he goes to Michael Cole, and he, he, he shakes Corey's hand, he shakes Pat's hand. But he gives Corey just a nice, warm, firm embrace because of how far those two have come together. And how much their relationship has been important, and how much Michael Cole has been important to Cody Rhodes. Because I don't think, if anyone else was on commentary, calling Cody's return, Cody's run to the title and all this stuff, I don't think, I don't think Cody's in the same spot he's in right now. But that was beautiful. And Mania ends with one of the most historic title reigns of all time ending. The greatest Universal Champion. One of the greatest WWE Champions of all time. And a very, very nice video has been shown many a times of Roman after he walks up the ramp. Him and Paul Hammond share a, share a very emotional hug and what I would give to hear what those two said to each other I teared up when I saw that because it humanized Roman more than I think anything else ever has but Wrestlemania 40 was amazing so thank you Cody Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, Roman. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Rhea. Thank you, Bailey. Thank you, Jade. Thank you, Eo. Thank you, Dakota. Thank you, Asuka. Thank you, Kyrie. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you, Naomi. Uh, thank you, Karrion. Thank you, Akam Rizar. <laughs> thank you, Paul Arndoff. Uh Thank you, BFab. Thank you... Scarlett, thank you. AJ, thank you. Dominic, Santos, 
Andrade, thank you Ray, thank you Cena, thank you Rock. Thank you KO. Just thanks to everybody who was there for an amazing show, but most of all thank you Triple H for giving your talent freedom, giving your talent the opportunity to go out there and put on amazing storytelling and amazing matches. Thank you for the dope show. And I can't wait to see more with you in charge. So with that, I say thank you for WrestleMania 40. Just thank you. <laughs>